Right now, we'll move from that analysis of the Race to the Top initiative to focus on a school that seems to fit right into Arnie Duncan's vision, a new documentary, Two Million Minutes, The 21st Century Solution, tells the story of an Arizona school that is pushing kids to very high levels of achievement, rewarding teachers with performance pay, and operating outside the traditional public system. New York City Schools Chancellor Joel Klein is getting a private screening today, and the filmmaker is in New York for that and joins us now. He is Bob Compton. Welcome to WNYC. Thank you very much. So first, why does Joel Klein, head of a one million student system in the capital of the world, need to know about a charter school in Tucson? Well, the charter school in Tucson, Basis Charter School, was named the number one high school in America by Newsweek. And it is based on my previous film, which was on India, China, and the U.S., a comparison to me a minute, a global examination. It is the best high school that I've seen in the world in terms of not just the curriculum, which is, which is a very high curriculum, but also in terms of the classroom interaction, the give and take, the Socratic method, uh, collaboration, teamwork, and uh, what I admire about Mr. Klein, and I've I've had a chance to meet him, had had uh, breakfast with him a few months ago, is he's always he he wants to learn, and he's always trying to learn new things and about how to improve education for uh, the children of New York. And he asked me to come, and it's not just for him. Uh, we're I'm going to screen it for his staff as well. The best high school in the world. That's quite a statement. What do they do at the best high school in the world? Well, they take pre-calculus at, um, uh, well, first of all, they take all the, all the courses that we teach in high school, and they teach those in middle school. And so they start, for example, in mathematics, pre-calculus in, uh, in their ninth grade, calculus in the 10th grade, and then AP calculus in the 11th grade, and then differential equations and game theory in the 12th grade. They do the same thing in English literature, English grammar, world history. They teach it over uh, more years, and they teach it to greater depth than anything I've seen in India or China. And the difference in India and China is uh, those classrooms, although they're trying to change very quickly, those classrooms tend to be the teacher delivering information uh, to the students in more lecture form. Whereas the best American high schools, and we've got a lot of great American high schools, uh, unfortunately they tend to be islands of excellence, um, but the best American high schools are very uh, feisty, where there's a lot of discussion, a lot of critical thinking, a lot of you know, challenging of ideas, and, and that's what BASIS has this high curriculum and this, the, the best of the interactivity of, uh, of a great high school. Is it a selective school? Because we have a few high schools in New York City, for example, and a few in New Jersey and Connecticut where they're teaching those same things at the high school level, but those are considered the schools for the gifted and talented students, and you have to test in in eighth grade. No, it's, it's an open enrollment school, so um, all that's required is you apply and then work hard. And uh, the school actually, it started as a 6th, 7th, and 8th, and then they went ninth through 12th. And the problem was even kids coming out of public high school and coming into the 6th grade were already two years behind their curriculum. So they moved it. So it's now a 5th through 12th grade. And, um, and what, what you find is when students start at 5th grade and start a rigorous academic curriculum, they get in that rhythm. It's just like in many ways, athletics. You know, when you start training hard when you're young, you know, as you get older, you're comfortable with hard training. Well, the intellect works the same way. And so they start at fifth grade, then they start training really hard. By the time they're in 12th grade, they, they're very comfortable with, uh, with a heavy curriculum. So, listeners, we're hearing about what our guest calls the best high school in the world, the basis charter school in Tucson, Arizona. It's the subject of Bob Compton's new documentary, Two Million Minutes, The 21st Century Solution, a follow-up to his other film that you may know, Two Million Minutes, uh, which compared high schools in India, China, and the United States. Um, we can take phone calls. Anybody, any high school teachers listening, anyone else on the best high school in the world? And what would make the best high school in the world as far as you're concerned? 212-433-WNYC-433. Nine six nine two, and I wonder if teacher quality has to do with it. I'm going to play a clip of the president of Caltech, uh, Jean-Louis Chameau. I met him at the Aspen Ideas Festival, where we did some broadcasting this July. 
And he had this to say about science teachers. In Asia and most of Western Europe, the large majority of uh, science teachers are people who are educated in science, have degrees in physics, in mathematics, in chemistry, and I think they find ways to uh, excite young people and, and show them that, uh, how cool and exciting science can be. In this country, it is the reverse. The large majority of our teachers have not received a, a deep education in, in science. What about that? Science he, teachers coming out of the sciences rather than right. out of the education schools. He, he's exactly right. And that's also one of the things that makes uh, the basis school unique. Eighty percent of their teachers are not certified. They have uh, master's or Ph.D. degrees in their domain. So a Ph.D. in physics, a Ph.D. in chemistry, a Ph.D. in, in literature, for example. But don't you ha need to learn how to Abs teach? I absolutely. mean, how many scientists do you know, how many people who understand great literature, whatever, but couldn't talk to a 14-year-old to save their lives? Well, I, I know a lot of scientists who, who couldn't talk to a 14-year-old to save their lives. I, I also know a lot of scientists who love to teach and who love children and love to impart knowledge. In fact, I would say more of the scientists that I know at the Ph.D. level uh, who are practicing in industry um, have to be good teachers because they have to talk to customers. 